Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast on the WITRN network. Come join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for Sunday worship. Bible study is held on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are located at 3006 North Lindbergh Boulevard Suite 711, St. Louis, Missouri, 63074. All are welcome and we look forward to seeing you soon. Somebody's trying to get. It. I think. I think the church house Lord is getting it. When you think you're going through, just look at the cross. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 When you think you're going through, just go look at the cross. Yeah. And then when you look at the cross, just hide in that blood. Yeah. And then what you know is that thing that was bothering you yeah. become very small compared yeah. to what Jesus yeah. done for you. Yeah. I think the church is getting it now. It's like I look at that cross so much in the daytime. I'm like, Lord, I can see what Paul went through. It blinded him. The cross blinded him. It knocked him off his horse of pity. Knocked him off, him off his horse of arrogance. He had to bow his knee and say, Lord, is that you? Yes, it is. Amen. He said, it's hard to kick against the brick. Now, see, some of y'all still kicking against what God want to do with you and for you. But you got to surrender. Yes. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. We're going to have scripture and prayer from... Brother Marvin and Kaden already got started. I, I think I'm about to call up here again. And but then you know what we're gonna have? We're gonna have scripture prayer from Brother Marvin. Then we're gonna have uh, uh, exhortation again from Sister K. Amen. And then we're gonna have uh, no, yeah, we're gonna have observation glory from Sister Stacy. Amen. Amen. 
All right, brother Warren, come on. Man. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Walk in Truth Amen. Christian Good Fellowship. Morning. I'm going to tell y'all something. It's been a blessing to be here to just absorb all the blessings and the love to share it up in here. I'm telling you. All right. I got some scripture I'm going to read from uh, Romans 14. All right. And it says, accept the ones whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen on that one. Mm -hmm. The one who eats everything must not threat with contempt. The ones who <coughs> does not and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. For God has accepted them. Who are you judge someone else's servant? To their own master's servants and stand or fall. And they will stand for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord. For they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains themselves so the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone. And none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Right. Let us op uh, open our minds for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're all on one accord giving you all the glory and all the thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to strengthen all of our walks, all of our journeys, Heavenly Father. Let us learn to just love one another more and more. Let us learn to serve one another more and more so we can get out there and serve and love others, Heavenly Father. Let that love start in our heart, Heavenly Father. Let it start here at our home, church home, Heavenly Father. And all those who's out there listening, just always depend on the Lord for love. And just keep depending on him no matter what you're going through. Never give up. Never throw in that towel, Heavenly Father. We need you so much more each day, not just today, but the, when we walk out these doors and every day of our rest of our lives, Heavenly Father. We cherish and love you. But most of all, we thank you for the greatest gift of all, the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Well, that didn't sound strong at all. Amen. 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 Well, that's, that's how you're supposed to give the Lord some praise, especially when his word is read. Amen. 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 Oh, y'all know y'all hungry or something? Yeah. I, I, I don't know about y'all today, but you know I'm so full today, y'all. I, I mean, when I say I'm full... On my way here, I was just praying for this body, and I was just thanking God for the people that's in this body. And I was just, I can't even remember the song. I, I really wanted to blow that tune for y'all real quick, but I can't remember. But you know, it wasn't meant to be. But anyway, I just wanted to get up here, and I just wanted to just continue to encourage you all. Amen. 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 Hey, there you go, well, I don't know what's wrong with y'all today, boy. Y'all need some orange juice or something? I, well, let me, okay, let me let me go ahead on and move because y'all looking at me like y'all need a steak or something. But, you know, I just wanted to, like I said, I wanted to get up here and I wanted to thank the Lord for being amongst you today and just praising him and worshiping him. Like I was saying earlier, when you're going through, you got to learn how to worship him. Because then that going through is something in there that you need to be looking at. But see, you so busy looking at the circumstance that you can't see what God is doing for you in that situation. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me because y'all still look crazy. See, it's when you start paying attention to the spirit in you, what the spirit is saying to you, that situation and that circumstance starts to be smaller. Yes. See, it's something, maybe something you need to change about yes. yourself. Come right. Stop looking at other people and look at yourself. Yes. The Bible said examine yourself daily. Yes. So you ain't examining yourself on a daily, daily basis. Come on. It's easy for you. It ain't my fault. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. My daughter said, I'm always telling, look at him, look at him, look at him. <laughs> That'd be a big job on the highway. But you, 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 can't, you can't focus on other people when God is using that situation and show you something about yourself. Come on, come on. 
See, y'all, y'all don't want to hear that because I ain't doing nothing wrong. I'm good. I'm good. I'm saved. Just because you saved, this say we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And guess what? You going to keep sinning. But you got to learn how to repent and stop going back to that same thing. See, see uh, we'll repent. And then like two weeks later, someone sooner than that, go right back into that storm. But see, then, then God got to show you something. Okay, you want to go back, I'm coming at you differently. I'm going to give you something else. And it's trying to get that same attention about that same exact thing that you just repented and came out of. See, you got to learn to stand on the word of God, not to walk on it. The pastor told us a story yesterday about a floor and a, and a statue. I can't remember it all, but some of us get tired of being walked on. But see, you couldn't even stand going through the pain when you was being put down. But to see the statue, he went through the pain because he's like, I want to sit on this floor. Some of us want to be great servants of God, but you're scared. You're scared you're going to get cut along the way. You're scared you're going to bump something that you don't want to bump into. But how do you think you grow? It's going to take some cuts, some bruises, some scars, but I tell you what, the Lord said he got band-aids for all of it. All it is is the word of God. You got to learn how to stand on it. He got that knee of sword too. You either want to be healed quicker or you want to take the long route. But if you take the short route, like you said, you want it on the right road or the narrow road. Some of us be off on the wide road and there's all kind of stuff going on over there. But see, if you stay on the narrow road and face the things that God got you facing, you're going to be okay because you got to learn how to focus on what God is telling you. Or showing you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. But if you let that situation take over what God is trying to do in you, you ain't gonna get it right. You can't get it right. Because you know what? You're being prideful. And being prideful means you there's a lot of self ambition in what you're doing. I'm gonna get myself here. But God said you can't do nothing without me. You got to learn to lean on the Lord and trust in the Lord with all your heart. And what it say? Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways. Trust in Him. Acknowledge Him and trust Him. And He'll lead you through. But we are all trying to lead ourselves to this, this great place. But you can't go there. Not in this body. So if you're trying to get there in this body, this natural body, you might as well turn around and start all over again. Because you know what? It's one thing that God said. That this body right here cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It's the soul in you. The spirit man. Trust in your spirit, y'all. Trust in your spirit. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Walking Truth. Good morning. And those that are listening around the world. Um, I just have a short observation that I want to share with you guys. Um, in a few weeks, we're going to start um, studying the book of Jeremiah. So um, the other day, while um, I was at the beauty shop under the hairdryer, I just started to read, you know, a few chapters. And there was something that really stood out to me, and I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, it's Jeremiah 4.22, and it reads, My people are foolish and do not know me, says the Lord. They are stupid children who have no understanding. They are clever enough at doing wrong, but they have no idea how to do right. And so when I read that, I mean, that really stood out because that answers the age-old question of, you know, what's going on in the world? Why is the world in the condition that it's in? You know, Daphne and I were talking this morning, you know, why do people steal cars, you know? <laughs> and the reason is my people are foolish. You know, why is there so much evil in the world? And why is there not enough love? You know, they are stupid children who have no understanding. Why is there so much crime and violence? 
because they are clever enough at doing wrong and they don't have no idea how to do right. Mm -hmm. So um, so that explains everything. So um, as far as them not knowing him, they don't know God. They don't know that they have to glorify him. They don't know that they should know him as God. They don't spend time with him. They don't commune with him. And as far as Jesus Christ, they don't understand the sacrifice that he made for them. They don't understand their need for him. They don't know um, the fact that his blood cleansed them from their sin, their atonement from their sin. They don't understand righteousness. They don't understand justification, sanctification. They don't understand any of that. And then after I was reading that, the question is, why don't they understand? And I was like, are you telling them? They don't understand. They don't know God. Unless we tell them. And the question is, are we telling them? Because in chapter 1 of Jeremiah, that's when God called Jeremiah. And of course, Jeremiah was giving him an excuse the way we all do. But God said, I'm not having it. You know, I'm not taking your excuse. You know, you're going to go where I tell you to go. You're going to say what I tell you to say. And so that's what he's saying to us today. You know, do we do that? You know, there are people that we love, people that we know people that we have influence over, do we tell them what thus says the Lord? Right. You know, you know, I'm not telling you to be a busybody in someone else's life, but, you know, someone that you have influence over, you can tell them, you know, you may be going down the wrong road, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, God doesn't want you to do this. You know, God's word says this, you should do this. So, yeah, that's one thing that we should do. We should tell people the way um, Jeremiah, he finally accepted his calling. He, he was telling people. And so that's what we should do. Like this weekend, we do have um, um, the St. Louis Evangelism event coming up. And so we should take advantage of that opportunity to tell people about Christ. So I know that we um, we like to sit under the tent, you know, be comfortable. But this time, let's go out and meet someone and tell them about Christ. You know, you ask them, do you know Christ? Do you go to church? Or, you know, um, I know a God that he can help you out if you're in trouble. So let's take advantage of that this this Saturday coming up. Amen. So um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you. That that's what I got out of it. So let me say a quick prayer. Um, dear Lord, thank you, Lord, because we are your people, Lord. We know the truth. We do know you. We understand what you have done for us on the cross, Lord, and help us to tell others. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Sister Stacy, for that um, timely uh, message. So I have a testimony this morning. Um, on Friday night, something that I've been waiting for for over almost nine years now finally came in the mail. <laughs> um, so you guys know how I came to the U.S. I, I, I'm an immigrant. Um, I came as an international student to study in college in North Carolina. And I don't like to talk about this because it's always some stigma attached to it, like, oh, this and all that. But I, I, every time I just find myself just bursting with joy and I've cried. Like, I don't, or I don't cry. <laughs> I don't cry. There's no need to cry, but I've cried. I'm like, God, I can't believe that you love me this much. I mean, God is too good. And I'm just so... Yeah. Oh my God. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to God. <laughs> so I came as an international student. I went to school. Um, the the government in Nigeria was paying for my tuition. Me and eight other students. My parents are not rich. They don't have money to afford American tuition. You you guys know how expensive oh, it is. Yeah. 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 And so they weren't planning to send me out of the country to study. I was just going to go to a regular school at home, and they can afford that. But when I got here, you know, everybody was happy, and then the government stopped paying my tuition. Yeah. And my parents didn't have any money to continue you know, to keep paying for me to go to school, so I had to drop out of college and go and hustle, you know. Um, <laughs> And I said, you know, I did a lot of things. I went to, you know, I tried to work, and, and then I finally started my own business. You know, things was things were going on well for me. I tried to file for my permanent residence to stay in the U.S. I tried. It takes like two years. After like a long time of waiting, they finally denied me. It was very heartbreaking. It was very sad. I was I coiled up into this shell. I was kind of upset with God. You know, for so, uh, just those are a lot of things. And then finally, um, just a few months before, actually two days or so before I had the baby, I said, let me try again. So I filed again for my green card. 
this takes two years, guys, but in under 90 days, I received my grand card. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. I'm so grateful, God, because that means a lot for me. Um, it means that a lot of things. And now I can finally go home and see my family after almost nine years of being here. All right. So I'm, I'm very grateful to God, and I can bring my husband, I can bring my baby. They haven't seen me in nine years. I can bring the whole family to and um, I, I just look at myself, I'm like, God, I can't believe you did this. Because when it didn't come, I was so sad, I was so heartbroken. I saw all my friends getting it, and I thought, why? Why didn't you, why can't you let me get it right? What happened? And then finally, he did it for, to, for me in, in such a way that, such a short period of time. I didn't think it was possible. I thought, I'm going to just wait next two years before they call me. And they didn't schedule an interview. Normally, they'll ask you to come with your spouse for an interview. They just gave me my green card. I'm like, what? Yeah. So I'm very grateful. That is my testimony. I just want to thank God. Thank you so much, Lord yeah. Jesus. I just appreciate you. I don't even know how to say it. I just find myself singing all the time. I've just yeah. been so yeah. grateful to you. Thank you, God. I appreciate this. And, and I don't take it for granted. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's something to give the Lord another praise. Hey. 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 Amen. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Amen. It is so amazing to think that it took all that time to get denied. But you know, when you start blessing God in advance, it don't take time long for God to say yes and amen. Amen. You we know we already knew that was gonna happen. Amen. Cause, Cause God is a on time yes, God Ain't yeah. yeah. there a song Something like that He's yeah. on time God Yes he is yeah. 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 Amen We just thank God today yeah. We just thank him today Cause he is a on time God yeah. and, and, and again It's just amazing to me That when we think about God Being an on time God we, we always forget That he moves how he wants to move I know we want him to move With our time Sometimes God wants to move in his time so he can get all the glory. Yeah. See, what I what I heard in that story is I did all this work. I got me a job. I was hustling. I was we got a business and, and I was waiting. But then when she slowed down and became a mom, as she would say. I love her say mom. When she became a mom and a and a wife, God said, I gotta go ahead and move. <laughs> For my child, I gotta, I gotta go ahead and secure her heart and her mind. Amen. Amen. That's just something to think about. You, you can't go home because you know if you went home, they gonna keep you. I, I, I can imagine what she was going through. Matter of fact, Stacy, Stacy, we tell you, I told her, I say, the reason why Judith ain't went home is because if she went home, this is what you just said. This, I say, I just got that feeling they would keep her. But look at God. Amen. We might, we, might, we might go over there. She comes with a posse of people. Amen. Praise God. We just dressed Jacoby up like a little prince and we just walk behind him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. You are so, so good. So, so good. I, I'm just the that, that, that testimony is just oh, oh. he didn't have to, but he wanted to. He went to the cross for you. He rose for you. He's coming back for you. He did it all for you. The recipient of a covenant between him, of God the Father and God the Son. That all that you will give me, I won't lose one. Yes. You are sealed for the day of redemption. You got to start believing that, saints. You've been sealed for the day of redemption. God, God has you in his hand. God has you, and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You can know him in the power of his resurrection. 
you can get to know the God that loves you so much. He knew you before you knew yourself. He knew you before your mother knew you no more. He knew that he would have a people called out, the separated ones, the church that would be the body of Christ. The mystery that was held back from ages that was given to Paul. We just thank God for that. All right, today we're going to, and I don't know if I'm going to get through it today, but we're going to attempt to just at least get it started. Amen. Amen. Open up your Bibles to uh, Mark chapter 2. And this is a familiar story. This is about the paralytic man. And this is actually motivated by my dear sister Daphne. Amen. She came out of uh, Luke. And the paralytic man, and then it's in Mark and it's in Matthew. Uh, I think it's in Luke chapter 5, if I believe, and it's in Matthew chapter 9, and then it's in uh, Mark chapter 2. And it goes from 2 until 12. Me and Nancy had been rocked together a long time, so come on, Nancy, let's do it like we used to. All right. <laughs> Mark chapter 2. Get the microphone, Nancy. I want it loud and proud. Go ahead. <laughs> And when he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, why do you question these things in your heart? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorify God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Amen. 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 And, I, and, I, and I titled this, after the movie, The Sound of Freedom. All right. All right. The Sound of Freedom. All of us remember, maybe some of you don't, the day that you got set free. And a lot of times what ends up happening is, I want to really take my time with this, a lot of times what ends up happening in our lives is that we don't even know that we're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. wow. Paralyzation is the inability to be able to move. And a lot of times what happens with us is that we can't move because of something. And I want to kind of address that, like I said, I might not get finished today, but I want to address this 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 thing because instead of looking for a sign you need a sound <laughs> um, in this passage we have Jesus in his new home called Capernaum and then to let you know uh, we know that his first home was Nazareth but you know they tried to make him a king and then when he wouldn't be made a king they way they wanted they tried to throw him off a cliff <laughs> so he moved to Capernaum and then, and then if you go back the reason why he's in, our, in his home, his home is actually Peter's home. That's Peter's home that he's in. He's not in a home of his own. He's in Peter's home. Peter's mom's home to be, Peter's mom's home to be exact. <laughs> and he had just raised her and got her together to get ready. And the crowds are pressing Jesus because the word he had just healed a leper. And he told the leper, don't tell nobody. <laughs> but see, Jesus came, came, Jesus became more popular for his miracles than his message. He, gave, he became more popular because of the fish and the loaves. The things that you could see, touch, feel, and smell. Those things that, 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 that wow us out. 
in the book of Luke, when he talks about it, it says at the end that they were afraid. They were amazed. That, that the, the Greek word is phobia, which we get our phobia. They were just so outdone by this man doing these things. It's hard to make a leap when you've got so many things in front of you to make a leap that the Pharisees, if you ever know what you should be thinking, look at how the Pharisees respond. Because the Pharisees responded that only God can forgive sins. And they were right. But in this story, you see the, it unveiling and you see what we see is a great sound of freedom. And the freedom started with these four friends and one paralegic man who had been paralyzed. We don't know how long he was been paralyzed, but he's been paralyzed. And somehow or another, the word got back to them, wherever they came from, that Jesus is a healer. That Jesus has done all kinds of things. I even heard that he told the wind to be still, and the rain to stop. Come on, Can you imagine hearing that? You got a friend that's down. A friend that can't move. And one of them, I can see one of them saying to the other one, saying, you know what? We should take him. To Jesus. And I can see the paralytic friend saying, Well, how am I going to get there? How, how, how am I going to get there? It's just two of you, and I'm on a gurney, and you know it takes at least four people to carry a gurney. He said, Well, we'll go get two more people that believe that you can be healed, and, and we'll, we'll just take you there. And, and, and he said, Well, it's a long journey, but you know, sometimes you have to go the long way to get to your blessing. Sometimes you have to, let's Kate was saying, we, we were studying this, this Saturday about pride. Sometimes you gotta drop your pride and let somebody take you. Because you paralyzed. And the worst thing to be is paralyzed that don't even know it. You tried it your way. You thought you could teach yourself. You thought you could get all the knowledge. But all I see is puffed up ism. Because you don't know that the people of the body of Christ need your gift. And I want to say something now. And this is a very appropriate time to say it as we listen to the sound of freedom. See, the thing about it is you can fake the gift, but you can't fake the fruit. Come on, come on. Come on, bro. You can do church stuff. And it can look like that. But the one thing you can't fake is love, joy, and peace. See, you can't fake that. See, so we don't judge the gift we look for the fruit. See, you can't tell me that you're doing it all by yourself and expect to have the fruit for the saints. See, uh, it just don't make no sense to me because I don't understand when 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 when, when Paul told Peter, Paul, I mean, Paul told Timothy, he said, I'm going to teach you who's going to teach faithful people who's going to teach other faithful people. The required thing in this thing is called faith. And see, we have to rely on each other because we all paralyzed. There's a physical paralyzation. There's a mental paralyzation. But then the worst one is a spiritual paralyzation. And see, these guys didn't know nothing about the spiritual paralyzation. They were just trying to help a friend. And ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't. I, their motives was real good. Their motives was, was tight. Their motives was right. They wanted to help their paralytic friend. We don't know how long he's been there, but I'm assuming he's been there for a minute. And they said, I heard about Jesus. Let's go. So I imagine him walking down the road saying, we're going to get him to Jesus. Then about a while back, they said, man, it looked like a big crowd over there. What, what, I wonder if they're just in our way of, is that, is that where Jesus at? And as they got closer and closer, they realized that Jesus was in the house over there. But they couldn't get to him. Because the crowd was there to see Jesus too. And Luke, it tells us that he was there and the Holy Spirit had gave him power to heal. You know, Jesus healed everybody that came before him. He didn't turn nobody away that wanted healing. And see, Jesus, the healing was a sign to a bigger healing, which was the message. But a lot of times we get stuck on the sign so we can get the sign and be paralyzed. God can heal all your ailments right now and you be paralyzed. Because there's something about when you're still hurting that you're going to want to come on back and get some more. But when he heals you of everything, I've watched some of you, God will heal you, and then you'll turn your back. You'll turn your back on the congregation, and you'll say, oh, well, you know, I didn't got what I wanted, and now I'm going to go back to doing what I want. When God spared you, say, I healed you because I needed you to be a gift to the people that you were around. Everybody in here is a gift to the person sitting next to you. 
You need to get the norm so you can unpack it. So they wouldn't be next to you or in this body if the thing didn't need you. I need everybody up in here, not for my sake, for everybody's sake. Amen. 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 So they can't get in the building. They can try to get through the door, but the people that want to see Jesus won't let them in the building. So you got a paralyzed man, and they won't even move out the way. Wow. They so enamored by Jesus, they become paralyzed to the fact that there's a person who needs a more that needs to come in the door. They wouldn't let him in the door. They wouldn't part. Nobody said, you know what, you can take my seat. Y'all can go on up front. No, no, no. We're here to see Jesus get our healing. See, sometimes you'll be paralyzed with your own selfishness. Come on, man. Come on. You in the right place, but your mind ain't in the right space. Well. You can't get through the door. So 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 he went to the window. They went to the window, looked at the window, and people sitting in the window was like, no, I ain't moving. <laughs> he went around to the back, and the back door was full of people, and, he, and they said, let me, can I please come in the back? Can I get a little close to Jesus? Can't you see I'm carrying this paralytic man? He's a friend of ours. He might be a friend of yours, but see, no, I'm here to get my healing. I'm here to get what I think I'm supposed to get. See, I want some healing too. But this guy can't move. Well, the well, fact that you stand in the door, you count a little bit better than this person. Right. And see, that's what we got to understand. I know you need Jesus. Right. But is it more important that you bring somebody to Jesus? Amen. It took four people to bring him. And they couldn't even get in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get past the folk that was there for, 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 for their own healing. The curious folk. They was just there. They, they, they weren't there to get saved. They was there to get the fish in the load. They were there to watch a miracle. They was there to watch the miracle man. Because of the miracles were, were way more accepted than the message. The message was rejected, but the miracles was supposed to, just like any sign that points to the bigger thing. The exit sign points to the door. The miracles points to the Messiah. But they couldn't see that because they were looking at the man. See, we missed the message because you're too busy looking at the man. You're too busy looking at how they look and how they talk and what they do and, and, and what you think about them. And you sit and you're paralyzed. And you're missing the sound of freedom. The Bible says, in, 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 and I believe this in, 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 uh, in uh, Pentecost, that a sound of a rushing mighty wind came in. See, sometimes you can miss the real wind because you're looking at the storm. Oh, you get that when you go home. Okay, so he's trying to get in. They can't get in, okay? So then one had to be an engineer because he looked at the roof and he looked at them and he looked at the roof and he said, I bet you if I go 10 feet this way, and five feet this way, I can make at least a four foot by six foot hole, and we can lower you right down in front of Jesus. That had to be a calculation given by God. Because if it was me, I'd have made that hole and he'd been in the back seat. <laughs> but he made the calculation. And they laid him before the master. Can you imagine that kind of roof was nothing but dirt and leaves? Jesus is there. The Bible says he was there to preach. Preach the word. And you can you imagine? All of a sudden, dirt start falling on your head while you're preaching. And you and you look up, and all of a sudden, they had to lower him down with some ropes. Yeah. While they stayed on the roof. So they didn't rope them, they didn't lower them down, bed and all. Jesus is probably shaking the dust off his head. The Pharisees are wondering what the heck is going on. The people are saying, I was here first. Everybody paralyzed. Even the man on the bed is paralyzed. Because they done forgot the message. They looking at what's going on. We are so easily distracted. We're so easily distracted. So that they, they lower them down right before Jesus. And Jesus is amazed at the four people's faith that they had enough faith to bring their friend. Yep. See, do you have enough faith that you're going to bring your friend to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Or do you hold it to yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you just, you just I'm, I know the Bible and I'm smarter than everybody else. And let me, no, 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 no. If the Bible don't lead you to Jesus, you're wasting your time. Yes. 
If the Bible don't, I don't care how much knowledge you know, if the Bible don't humble you and let you bring somebody to Jesus, you just puffed up and smart. Say that. Say that. God don't need smart people. He needs submitted Holy Ghost filled people that are humble in heart. It doesn't make a difference what title I have. If I can't bring you to Jesus, I'm, I'm wasting my time. If I don't encourage you, no matter what you do, we are all commanded to bring people to Jesus. Whether it's two of us, three of us, or four of us, get that paralytic to be Jesus. Yeah, come on. It might be natural. And they were there for the natural healing. But Jesus is amazed at the five people's faith. All of them had faith. And they were willing to take a chance. They didn't commit a crime. Property damage. But they're willing to do that for their friend. How far are you willing to go for your friend? Well, wow. how, how, how far are you willing to go to get somebody to Jesus? I hear you. Why well, tell people about the church? Go get them. Excuse me. I tell people about the church, but and y'all invite them to the church. Go get them. Amen. Bring them. Don't tell them all, oh, yeah, we on YouTube and we on Facebook. And we, yeah, we on all of that, but wouldn't it be better for them to get the experience? Yeah. Yeah. First hand, they come to you and you done told them and they smile at you and they say, okay, okay. See, they, they let you know I'm paralyzed, but maybe I'm scared. I'm paralyzed, but maybe I've been church hurt. I'm paralyzed, but you know, can, 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 can you come get me and hold my hand and walk me into church so I can just sit there and, 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 and receive something? Because, see, I've been paralyzed for a long time. A lot of y'all have been paralyzed in your own mind for a long time. See, it's not the physical paralyzation I'm talking about. It's the spiritual paralyzation that you go through. That's right. That's right. See, and Jesus said, because of y'all's faith, he says thing he said. He didn't even address the physical. He went straight to the spiritual. He said, your sins are forgiven. Can you imagine you came for this and he said that? I didn't come for my sins to be forgiven because I thought that I was okay because I didn't need the, 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 for my sins to be forgiven because I've been paralyzed physically. I have an affirmity. I ain't nothing wrong with me. I don't do nothing to nobody. So can we get on with it? <laughs> well, well, come on now. But he said your sins are forgiven. Yes. And then the church folk, the scribes and the Pharisees, they come along and looking at Jesus and he, he, he looks in their hearts and let me tell you what Jesus was here to do. In Luke chapter 5, and you don't have to go there and answer, Luke chapter 5 verse 32 it says that he came to call the sinners to repentance not the righteous. In Ephesians 1 7 it says that we have been redeemed by his blood and we have forgiveness of sin. In Christ Jesus. That's why he came. He came to forgive sins. See, but you want your physical miracle. He came to heal your paralytic, uh, a spiritual miracle. He wanted to stop the paralyzing thing that sin does. It keeps you completely separated from God. You can't move to God until you deal with your sin. Wow. Mm. So he told the man his sins are forgiven, and he knew the hearts. Of these Pharisees. They didn't say anything. Because every time they dealt with Jesus, Jesus checked them. But in their heart, they like, hmm. Here we go again. Look at what he's doing. He ain't doing this one he ain't doing on the Sabbath day. But he said something that's even worse. He said, Your sins are forgiven. And immediately they became paralyzed. The church folk became paralyzed. Scribes and Pharisees became paralyzed because instead of accepting the glory of a man's sins being forgiven and realizing that they are Messiah, they made a correct statement, but their mind was paralyzed. Don't you know you can say the right thing and have the right wrong mind? Yeah. They said, 
Only God can forgive sin. They were exactly right. They should have made the leap from, it must be God. But no, they didn't like him because he was upset everything that they taught. See, the issue with the Old Testament was there's nothing wrong with the Old Testament. It's something wrong with the Pharisees in the Old Testament and the scribes in the Old Testament. Because you just couldn't follow the law, but you had all their little rules that they didn't even keep up with. That kept you from coming to God. They had more rules to keep you from coming than the mercy that'll get you there. Well, and sometimes in our church, our traditions mess us up because our missions paralyze us and the people that we're trying to get to come to God. Where we look at the tradition of what we do more than we look at the God that we serve. See, you have to remember back when you was paralyzed, when you was hopeless and helpless, when you was, they say, without hope. But God, who's rich in mercy, he saved you. Because he came to redeem sinners. So here God comes. He, Jesus says, hey, look, your sins are forgiven. And then they think that he knows what's in their heart. He said, why do you think this in your heart? And then I bet you're looking at us like, we ain't say nothing. He said, why, why, why do y'all think this in your heart? Let me ask you a question. Is it easier for me to say, forget the son of man to say, forgive sins, or to say, take up your bed and walk? Is it easier? He said, so that you may know. That the Son of Man has the authority yes. to forgive sins. Go and take up your bed and walk. Right. Right. See, right then and there, it lets me know the most important thing, Jesus took care of the most important thing first. They were there for the physical, but they got everything else. See, God is a God that when he's going to deliver you, he's going to give you the whole package. He's just not going to drop you off with some some old cheap physical healing. He wants to heal your soul. And this, this is the thing. He wants to save your soul. Even if he doesn't heal you physically. Think about this. If he never did anything for that man, that man was going to go to heaven. That's the best thing that can happen to you. But we are so paralyzed. We. In church. Because we have these expectations of our past teachings and our past relationships that don't even match what God is trying to do in us and wow. to us. Wow. So it paralyzes us in our own mind. Everybody wrong except for me. You paralyze. If you look at your name and don't understand what's going on and you make a judgment, you're paralyzed. If you look at a friend or that's going through and you make too much of a judgment that condemns them, you paralyze. You don't have the power to condemn anybody. You a sinner too. That's right. That's right. But you do have the power to give them the gospel. Romans 1 16 says he was not, not, not ashamed. Just redo that with disappointed because that's what that means. I'm dis not disappointed in the gospel because it has the power to give of God for salvation to the yeah. Jew first and then to the Greek. So I'm not disappointed in the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. This is what he's telling you. No matter how paralyzed you are, it's the means of the gospel that get people walking again. That's, right. That's why in that song, Get Up and Live, I play. Because some of y'all got to get up and live. Yes. Well, you got to get out of your paralyzation and get up and live. You got to come forward and walk in that power of the resurrection that's in Philippians. You got to learn not to be anxious for anything, but in everything, give supplication and prayer so that one thing can happen, so that you can have a peace that surpasses all understanding that will guard your heart and your mind. See, you got to get to the point where you kind of can put this stuff together and say, I know what my problem is. My problem is I don't have faith that other must have seen. I just got faith when things are going my way. No, you don't exhibit faith when things are going your way. You exhibit faith when things are going God's way. And God's way is the faith that tests you when your things ain't going exactly how you want to go. No matter what I go through, I, I, I get a chance to just get before God and I say, God, you know, mold me. Mold me. Mold me. Mold me. No, 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 no. Don't let me go over there and mold me here. No, no, I'm so sorry, God. I, 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 I had a sinful thought the other day, Lord. 
Because but, but but you know what? I'm gonna repent because I understand the goodness of God should lead me to repentance. Right. See, I understand how good you've been. See, every time I go through something, I just say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, devil, you can't get me, and I can't get me either. God got me. See, y'all got to get that too. See, you can't get me, I can't get me, but God got me. See, I go to that cross and get everything just work out just like it's supposed to. I can give you another testimony, but I'm not. But all I can tell you is you have to look, be faithful and have the faith of these people that want to go through all kind of obstacles and challenges to get to God. They got the miracle and much more. Yeah. They got saved. Now think about it. He was healing everybody. But probably only five people got saved. Because just like them, you'll get your fish, you'll get your loaf, and you'll be happy, and you'll walk right away. And what you'll do is say, I figured out the formula. Oh my goodness. Well, mm -hmm. I figured out the formula how to receive my blessing. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this just that you formalize what God has done for you. Mm -hmm. So you figure this. Since I got a material blessing, what did I do that morning? Mm -hmm. Well, I got up and prayed for about five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then what I did was read my Bible for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I call somebody and thank them for 15 minutes. Uh -oh. And then the, then the blessing came. Uh -oh. So what you'll do is point that to somebody else and say, I got the, I got the cookie cutter. But see, God is not a cookie cutter. He's a saint maker. Come on, hey, boy, boy. Yeah. What I'm trying to point out to you is, you know how mom used to make them hamburger patties and they, are, they won't be perfectly round? They have her edges on them. Right. Yeah, that's what God do to make it good to you. He gonna make the hamburger. And it's, all the hamburgers don't look the same. Right. You know, you're a child, you're looking for the big one. But God said, Mama said, them the hamburgers that were made were just as good as the ones that look big. Yeah. You see, you're looking, you're not tasting. You're not tasting to see that the Lord is good. Yeah. See, so you got to listen for the sound of freedom. When that man heard said, your sin, when God said to him, your sins are forgiven, that was the sound of freedom. Amen. He didn't need no more noise. Thank you, Lord. We got to get a people a sound. Yeah. And the sound coming out of your mouth is the gospel. Yes. Yeah. How can get people get saved if you don't say something? Amen. You're trying to do something. Right. You need to be saying something. Yes. You want to be seen. Mm -hmm. I just want to be heard. Amen. Thank you. Because you're here yes. for one reason only is to bless somebody with the salvation that God has given you. Yes. You have the sound of freedom within your lungs. Yeah, if you want to attract them with something else, but be careful trying to trick them or, 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 or coerce them into the gospel. Mm. Because you got to deal with the sin. And if I've given you all the popcorn and candy and wham wham and zuzus and cakes and soda you want, it's hard to take you back to the salt. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be like, you didn't tell me that, that I had to deal with my sin. Yeah. 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 You done got me hyped on the hype. But see, we have to be brave enough to say, you know what? They paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And that's at the point of your identification as a saint of God. Mm -hmm. Don't forget when you were paralyzed. Because right. if you never forget when you was paralyzed, you'd be good for somebody else. Mm -hmm. But if you start acting as if you were never paralyzed, mm -hmm. you are lying. Mm -hmm. wow. God is not in that. Right. You need to be honest. It says if you confess your sins one to another, and to God, he's faithful to forgive you. You know why you confess your sins one to another? It's not for them necessarily to forgive you. It's for you to understand. Your brothers and sisters have been through the same thing at yes. one point in time in their life. Yes. It may not be your particular sin, but guess what? It don't make no difference what you've done because I understand how you feel. I felt the same way till I found out. See, we need some found out people in the church. We need some people that can go out here and say, you know what? I found out. What you find out? I found out that I got the sound of freedom in my mouth. They say, what's that? It's the gospel of God. Let me tell you about Jesus. See, you got to have your own story about Jesus that includes your testimony. See, I can tell my story, but you got to tell your story that leads them right up to the cross. Just when I thought that I was going to die, Jesus said, not him. And I was wondering, why not him? And he just made me break down and say, you've been a son and you deserve to go to hell. But you know what? I'd have provided you a way of escape. What you mean? My son, what did he do? He went to the cross. Why did he go to the cross? Because he loved you. Why did he do that? Because he loved me. You mean that he went to the cross 
Because you loved him and he loved you. And because he loved you, you love me and you love him. And I become your son and I'm in him and he in you. And we all in this together. Yeah, you in this together. Because guess what? God has forgiven you too. You have the forgiveness of sins. You don't need to get it. You keep trying to get what you already got. Which means that you paralyzed. You have the key. He said there's no more condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. So why are you still acting like you got to get something? Wow, wow, wow. You got to come out your paralyzation. Let it flow. There's nobody more paralyzed up in here. And I'm going to say this. There's nobody more paralyzed that could possibly be more paralyzed than me. I want you to think about that. You know why I'm paralyzed? Because I had to realize, Pastor, that y'all don't belong to me. I had to realize that y'all belong to God. He said, feed my sheep. He didn't tell me that I was over the sheep. I'm supposed to feed you. See, being in this position that I'm in of servanthood, that's why I've been on it so hard about being a servant because I could be the most paralyzed person up in here because I think it's all about what I'm doing and how I'm preaching and what I'm teaching. But see, the thing about it is it's not even about all of that. It's about how do I convey the word of God to get somebody to Jesus? If he don't use me, then you can't use me. If he decides that the, the arrogance will stop this thing, and it will. It, it, I've seen too many times where preachers' arrogance has stopped the Holy Holy Ghost flow in them. Yeah. They've been called by God, but they get off track because they start listening to the people talk about how great they are. Yes, Lord. I am no greater than I can feed you this word of God. And if I can't feed you this word of God and get you to Christ and teach you to get other people to Christ, I've wasted my time. I don't care what material blessing you get or don't get. I, that is not none of my business. That's between you and God. But what is my business is what he gave. He said, preach the word in season and out of season. See, that's how you stay unparalyzed when you know your assignment. I don't know what your assignment is, but I know what my assignment is. And I know what he told me to tell you. He told you, tell somebody about me. Give them the sound of freedom. Don't be paralyzed by your own insecurities. I can't, I won't, I don't know, I don't think I can. Who told you to think? He told you to be obedient. Trust me, let me tell you a secret. Come a little closer. If you be obedient to what you do know, God will fill in what you don't know. That's what you need to be. You want everything, and God said, I'm still trying to feed you. You still need milk. It's okay to be on milk. It's until it's time. He say, humble yourself. The reason why you can't go to meat, you ain't willing to take your teeth out and put Jesus' teeth in. What you say? He wants to take you off milk, but he got to break you some more. That's right. He got to break that arrogant spirit you got. That me is some spirit you got. And that woe is me spirit that you got. You know that woe is me spirit ain't nothing but reverse pride. Because people pay attention to you when you're woe with me. Some people on the pattern of woe with me. Every couple of years, here they come back around. Woe is me. See, you get me twice. You don't give me a third time. Mm. Because you know why? I'm not going to feed into what God is trying to break. Amen. Sometimes you just need to let that person stew. Amen. You pray for them, but let them stew. Because God is trying to break them down. So now I'm going to tell a story that Karen talked about and I'm done. All right. Because things are, you remember things orally most of the time. 
So there was this beautiful museum in the land that I don't know of, I've never heard of, but there was this land, this, this beautiful museum in this land. And, and, and there, everybody would come see this beautiful statue made out of marble and gold. And they would look at it and say, oh my God, this is awesome. The, the, the crafter did a mighty good job. Look at this statue. And the floor was made of marble and the, and the, and the statue was made of marble. So the museum left emptied out one night. And the floor said to the statue, he said, I'm mad. And the statue said, brother, what, what you mad for? He said, we were cut from the same valley at the same time. And nobody looks at me. They just walk all over me. And the, and the statue said, so? He said, that's unfair. And the statue started thinking, he said, hmm, that is unfair. He said, brother, I feel sorry for you, but, but can, I, can, I, can I talk to you about this for a second? He said, sure, I'm glad you feel sorry for me. He said, yeah, we were cut from the same quarry at the same time. And I noticed that, I remember, if I remember correctly, the master started on you first. Okay. <laughs> he started chilling on you first. He said, yeah. And he said, I remember that no matter how hard the master chiseled, you just wouldn't succumb to it. Mm. You cracked in places that you shouldn't have cracked. Mm. You, you, you bent out of shape. At one time, he hit the, hit the hammer on you. You didn't even move. Mm. <laughs> and he said, you know why I didn't move? He said, why? He said, because it hurt. Mm. Yeah. He said, it hurt. He said, so then I remember, he said, the statue said, if I remember, then he took you and put you and made you a tile on the floor. Mm. He said, yeah. He said, well, I was reasoning, since I was up next, that I would succumb to the discipline that the master was trying to do to me so I could become the statue that everybody admires. Come on, man. Your problem is, you're not going to get hurt by Jesus. Mm. Yeah. But you won't be admired as if you've been disciplined. <laughs> You want to be admired. You want people to look at you and say, what a great saint you are. But have you been in the fire? I ain't talking about the fire of your, your sin. I'm talking about the fire of the discipline of God. That's your problem. You know too much and know nothing at all. Come on, man. You can quote scripture, but if I close the word of God, can you give me the gospel in one minute? Can you give me the sound of freedom in 30 seconds? I don't care nothing about Daniel, Jeremiah, all of them if it don't take me to Jesus. All right. They men too. Paul said, I know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, I didn't come with words of wisdom. I turn plainly to you. He said, my, when I write, just like me, when I write, it's more eloquent than I talk. Because when I write, I can erase. But when I talk, I just got to make it plain, Bert. I can't use all that eloquent language. Because somebody going to say, I understand nothing he said. But there's one thing you going to understand. I want to get you to Jesus. Amen. I want to be one of those guys who pick you up. And I want to grab another sister or brother. And let's start carrying these paralyzed people. And whatever we got to go through, let's get them to Jesus. Amen. Whether we got to tear off some roots, metaphorically, don't tear off nobody's roots now. <laughs> or you got to walk through the wind and the rain. You got to get them to Jesus. Because you know that once you get them to Jesus, Jesus will complete the work that he will start in you. Amen. The completion of that man's work was get up your bed and walk, but your sins have been forgiven. So therefore, the discipline was the journey. <coughs> your discipline is, is somewhere hidden in a journey on your way to the next level, the next peak with God. Mm -hmm. But you got to succumb to the teaching. You got to succumb to the discipline. You got to be committed and accountable and responsible consistently. You can't be in one minute and out the next because you lie to yourself if you think that you're being committed. Okay? Right. Don't 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 play with God like that no more. If you, if, you, if you uncommitted, what did he say to an uncommitted person? He said, it would have been better that you never grabbed this plow than turn your back on it. Because at that point, 
When you're uncommitted and not consistent, you're not fit for the kingdom. And that's what Jesus said now. Don't be mad at me. Then my question, if you ain't committed and consistent, I got to ask the question. Where's your fruit? The fruit of uncommitment, the, the fruit of being inconsistent is no fruit at all. So no matter how much you come in or go or be with or do the things that church do, where's your fruit? Where's your love, joy, and peace? That you can have self-control, kindness, and patience towards others. Or is it all about you all the time? Mm. Mm. Jesus died for you. Jesus rose for your justification. And Jesus coming back for you. That's part of the Abrahamic promise. You don't live under covenant. You live under promise. Because you can't perform it. You can't perform it. Romans chapter 4. Verse 5. Read that. Romans chapter 4 verse 5 says, But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. That's all you need to do. Do you understand the magnitude of that? To the one who hasn't worked. Say hasn't worked. Yes. That means you can't keep the law. So stop trying. The one who hasn't worked, what did it say? He read, read again slowly, sure. and then I'm done. But to the one who does not work, does not work, but believes in him, believes in him, believe upon me as the scripture has said, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You got to believe in him the way he wants you to believe in him, not the way your imagination tells him. So don't tell me your opinion. Tell me what the word of God says in context. In context. In context. Don't be pulling out scriptures trying to meld them together to make them make mean nothing. Okay? So, don't work. Believe. And if your belief is where it needs to be, as God wants it to be, it's faith. And guess what God says? It's account to him as what? Righteousness. You know what that means? That means you saved. Amen. If he accounts his righteousness to you, that's your sad salvation. Because in that, he's forgiven you of your sins. Amen. What paralyzes you is you're still trying to work when you need to be still. And believe. The sound of freedom is a sound of belief and faith. And you walk that faith out every day. And your faith is going to be challenged. Your faith is going to be tested. So your faith can be trusted. So let's do what we're supposed to do, church. Let's start bringing people to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. It's not about bringing them to here, to church. Mm. Let's worry about that secondary. Let's deal with first things first. The church is the take up your bed and walk part. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness of your sin is where we need to get them to. Right. And we need to get them to the cross. Mm -hmm. And deal with first things first. And then we're a church that loves God and will teach you about God. Amen? Amen. 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 The sound of freedom. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. Continue to bless us as we go forward in faith. Lord, let us be willing to give the sound of freedom, which is the gospel, to each and every creature. Lord, you told us to start at our home base and then spread out throughout the world. But Lord, you said that they would know that we love you by the way we love each other. We are your disciples. We are your tools in your hands. Use us as you choose, O oh Father God. But also, Lord, bless the sound of freedom that comes out of our mouth. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Thank you guys for listening all over the world. I always want you to be encouraged, blessed, and at peace. And do what? Walk, Walk in truth. truth. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to today's teaching. We hope you have been inspired and encouraged. Please look in the description box for our contact information. All are welcome and we look forward to connecting with you soon. Be encouraged, blessed, and at peace and remember Walk in Truth. Thank you for listening to the Walk in Truth Radio Network broadcast. If this message has been a blessing to you consider donating on your favorite platform. You can donate by looking in the description box and picking your favorite platform of choice, Venmo, Cash App or PayPal. 
Continue listening. And your prayers are needed, welcomed and appreciated.